like morning, hey, uh, I think you know, we know him a bit like that. All right, good morning. It's 6.34 on Wall Street. Welcome to QuantBox.co's QuantBox Live. It's time to get your macro on. We're here to uncover the best fundamental opportunities across global markets. My name is Wayne McDonald. I am a classically trained economist from Harvard. I also have a master's degree in financial management. Anyways, I've been trading for 20 something years. Before that, I was a venture capitalist, so I was totally new to the markets. And now I'm a trend trader and I base trends on fundamental research. QuantBox automates your macroeconomic research. Why don't you give it a try? It's $8. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's delayed. Hours and hours delayed. Here we are early in the morning at QuantBox, and we're already doing our research for the day, for tomorrow, for next week, for the rest of the quarter, and for the rest of the year. So if you're a YouTuber, hey, hey kick down, come clean. Don't be a holdout machine. You know you want it. Take the trial, become a quant boxer. That being said, hey, let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Need to highlight that uh, on Tuesday, I will be doing the third quarter market outlook where we plan the next three to six months based on economic research. I will use information that's on QuantBox, but hopefully I find amazing information that's off of normal economic releases. And that is called high frequency data. We'll also probably dive into some trader psychology, so on and so forth. So a big whopping 10 bucks. You do not have to be a member of QuantBox. Um, but you do need to RSVP. Let me just post that. I think everyone has theirs already, but let me just post that. Um, and I will try to put that in the notes below today's videos for, uh, uh, for those who are watching on YouTube. Yes, YouTubers, you can, you can join us. All right, cool. So, um, let's log in to Z data base. Let me get the right account. There it is. Remember, if it if you're having trouble loading, read this. <laughs> read it. What do you mean, read it? Yeah, read it. All right, there it is. Cool. So we're back to mixed, but look at that wonderful scatter plot. Amazing. Okay, Bitcoin down a little bit today. Euro dollar up a bit. S&P 500 actually up quite a bit. The continuous contract there, almost to 45. So it's up three quarters of a percent already. Okay. Gold is kind of flat, but not bearish. Oil, look at oil. Oh, my gosh. My, oh, my. WTI continuing up. Yeah, probably running into some technical trouble now, but ooh la la. Very nice. And the yield on the 10-year hasn't changed at all. Now, when I say look at the scatter plot, I'm looking at the slope of the mean. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, yeah, let's take a, I just want to look at that. Look at all the stock market indices we're up, except the Japanese stock market. Interesting, cool. Um, all right, so let's open and, uh, well, actually, I was going to go to the, the scatter plot, but let's just take a look. Okay. So remember how we were risk on yesterday and then everything sort of flattened out. And there was, these were all neutral. Uh, the weekly bias is now a four. We went from a two to a four and monthly has moved from um, a one to a three. So there are, when you look at these baskets, again, the VIX, Japanese yen futures, dollar index, the yield on the 10-year T-note, gold, the S&P 500. When you put them together on these three different time frames, uh, it's become much more bullish. It went from mixed to uh, monthly risk on. That's a big change. So that's kind of interesting there. Um, 
Yeah. So risk on. See, this side is supposed to be green. I yelled at the developers yesterday. I, still, I guess they haven't figured it out or they don't understand. But these columns are supposed to be green because those are the things you probably want to be buying. And these are the things that you probably want to be selling in a risk on food. Cool. So I must have put the scatter plot, yeah, under market analysis. Cool. So uh, what I was saying here, and this is indicative of a risk on market, so it's another way of analyzing, is the market risk on or risk off. Get my drawing tool. And uh, maybe uh, I'll zoom in here. Click the bottom right-hand corner. Okay. Better. Uh, okay. Uh, so there's my drawing tool. What we're trying to do is, if you looked at the average price of all these asset classes in this period, remember it's the same period, let's say the, the last 24 hours or so. Okay. Um, what you would do is you would find that the average price, when you start adding them up, or, 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 Average, where's average, 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 average. And you'd get something like that, right? Okay, like that. Cool. That's a positive slope. Over a run, there's a rise. So remember this whole thing? Remember seventh grade? Y equals MX plus B. I remember that. They didn't teach you what it actually meant, huh? You just had to do it. Okay. You have a Y axis. You have an X axis. So that's the Y and the X. The B is the intercept, which is where it crosses over here. And M is the slope, which is the number of, uh, as you move to the right, how high does it go? So it's the rise over the run. So this is the slope of this okay so it's kind of cool like that's actually what you're being taught in seventh grade we didn't quite understand it but somebody your professor or your teacher didn't say well just imagine you had a scatter plot of asset classes around the world and you're trying to analyze risk on or risk off uh so the slope of the average of all these asset classes is a positive integer up that's what we're looking at here. So uh, when you look at all global assets here as an aggregate, uh, yeah, it's a positive slope. Now, what we've also, what I've also shown you is that means we're, you know, that things that are bearish, we're expected to be bearish. Things that are bullish, we're expected to be bullish and you want that positive slope, okay? And so really when you when you do that calculation, all that means is if M is a positive integer, it's risk on. If it's a negative integer, it would look like this, and that would be risk off. So when you eyeball a, a scatter plot like on this one, you go, Oh, risk on. Okay. Okay. Although there's a lot over here. Yeah, okay. Um, but there's quite a bit this way. Okay. That's why it's probably mixed here on the shorter run. Okay. So that, right. So that's cool. That's the updated. Here's those new gauges. So you can look at three different time frames at once. Remember, this is a new tool released. And what it's doing is looking at the market. Quantpox up until now only looked at the economy and compared two economies, but it didn't look at the market. This is all market-based. It's not looking at GDP. It's not looking at inflation. It's not looking at interest rates. Cool. Right? Another thing that uh, was released is the central bank forecasting tool. So you could say, uh, what's the Bank of England up to? Okay, this is their interest uh, interest rate into the future. Okay, the interest rate into the future. Here's their inflation into the future. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and if you look at the Bank of England over here, okay, this is what they're telling us interest rates are going to be like in the future. This is not a quant box opinion. This is a Bank of England opinion. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Nice. How about that COT report? Okay, much better organized. You can see the flow into number of contracts long, number of contracts short, the change of these, the percentage positioning. And then, of course, you can break this down. So if we were trying to analyze that pound, and remember, I was using Bank of England earlier. You can go here, Great British Pound, do comparative analysis against the United States. And these are the actual contracts, long pound and long USD. And you can see that that creates let's see, a pound. So this is pound. Okay less pound than dollar so anyways that's what this is showing us cool. anyways let's take a look at the um mm, 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 scorecard summary scorecard summary this morning kiwi cad very bullish nasdaq very bullish kiwi dollar very bullish Dow bullish, S&P 500 bullish. Wow, huh? Everything's rocking. If Kiwi is strong, stock markets are strong. Well, at least U.S. stock markets. Okay. Still lots of up on the yens. So we might want to take a look at some of those. Hey, would you like some Bitcoin? Oh, really? <laughs> Let me think about it. Okay, yeah, that could be a big, big fat maybe. Global stock indices. Let's quickly just look at the S&P 500. Yeah, nice. Noise, 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 noise. So when we're looking here in the July period, typically is okay for the stock market. Look how out, how crazy June was though. <laughs> like very, very unusually bullish. Very. Retail is heavily short the, the stock market. Isn't that amazing? And even institutional investors are not quite on board with this rally, which I think is really cool. ECB monetary policy meeting. Yeah, that could be interesting. Maybe a good read. We have PPI today in the United States of America, but we already had CPI yesterday. Remember the headline news is like, oh no, we only have three percent inflation. Uh, uh, well, we know that the Fed wants to look at core, and core was like five. So I think we still have some work to do in America, but whatever. Weekly jobless claims are important. That PPI coming out, core is what everyone's watching. But I think we already have an idea of what's going on, right? So. Um, Really, maybe even the weekly jobless claims are even more important than the PPI. Take a look. Uh, some of those yen pairs are still uh, uh, expected uh, to the upside. Let's take a look at some of those technically. Okay. Okay. And uh, somewhat of a big move uh, overnight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
What do you think about this one? Okay, daily 55. And Quantbox says, okay, remember, Quantbox isn't looking at yield curve control. That's not your a normal uh, economic indicator. In fact, it's not an economic indicator. It's a monetary policy, but it's not a typical monetary policy is changing the, the money supply or changing the cost of money through interest rates. And so uh, whatever, uh, but nonetheless, the economy in Canada is just better than the economy in Japan, hands down, that's that. And if you look at the uh, Quantbox uh, central banking tool, maybe I can still bring that up. You can get that through the new tool, right? So not the COT report, uh, uh, central bank forecasts. And uh, what you're looking at is Look at look at the the policy that we uh, that the central bank of Japan has told us is now and in the future. <laughs> What's their policy? Nothing. <laughs> like so, what this is showing is New Zealand. New Zealand over the next twelve months is expected to cut interest rates a lot. S Switzerland keep them high. This is the change. No change at the Bank of Japan. Not up, not down, nothing. That's what. That's the future. Nothing. So that's why when now you zip over, you're like, okay, Japanese yen has been weak for a long time, but is currently strong. Is that simply seasonality? Or is that a change in the policy at the central bank? Uh, well, it doesn't seem to be a change in policy at the central bank, right? So anyways, uh, so the big question mark right now, uh, we know this is a dynamic level of support. Uh, will it hold? That's the big question. So that's Kitty Cat. Take a look at Aussie and ask yourself, is there any dynamic support there? Uh, this one is already a day ahead of the CAD trade. It's the same trade, right? CAD is just starting to go up. Um, well, we had one day holding and now a bullish engulfing candle here. So if you were a bull, I could just drop into this smaller time frame. Okay. And you can see um, today's trade is already done. Okay. That's why you plan your trades in advance. Okay. It's done. T today's trade was here, which we identified yesterday. So that would have been the up, the down. The target for today is here, and we're already through that target. So that's what I mean. Like today's trade is done. And now tomorrow's trade, which would happen, let's say, in the next 12 to 24 hours, you would look for a dip to 94 and a half. Okay. And up. Cool. Okay. And by the way, this big green zone is the profit taking zone for bears. So it seemed to work. Sweet. And then you go back, you're like, but on the higher time frames, it's dynamic support, the 55. Now, the 55 suggests we only get back to like 97. Okay, maybe 98. But still, we're at 95. So don't worry about it. It's a couple hundred pips above us. Okay, uh, taking a look at Euro, do we see something similar there? Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought it would get down a little bit further. Okay. I have it coming down to here ish. Okay. A little closer to 53, but I guess we got pretty gosh darn close to 53. We got to 153.30. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, there might be a fib going on here. Fibonacci retracement, that might be what the market is looking at more than the, the than moving averages. This looks like a 50% Fibonacci retracement and maybe game on. Okay. Okay. Uh, Swissy. 
a very stable currency versus yen, a very unstable currency. Okay, once again, a couple of things going on to the downside. Here's the weekly target for bears. They seem to hit the target and take profit immediately. They knew they were counter trenders. And this is uh, a, a decent buying price for bulls on a monthly level. That's the monthly central pivot. The best price is a little lower, but that's a decent price. Okay. This is straight out of the training course at investorbootcamp.com. Okay. Very basic um, trade in which this is the buy zone. And so what we just hit the upper bounds of the buy zone. Okay. But nonetheless, it's gone. Look at that. Chow. So a day trade would look like that. And that would be somewhere between uh, today's market open and tomorrow's market open. Pound, this one uh, I'm still short just because, you know, I'm using this as an example. So uh, just like all the other pairs, uh, seasonality on QuantBox suggests that somewhere in this period, in this period here, so that's time down there, somewhere in this period, very often the ends pull back significantly. Did it happen? Well, that's uh, 184 and it dropped to 180. So 400 pip drop. So now, um, right, you have to decide how do you want to play it? Well, if all the other yen pairs are going up, this one will go up with it. Okay, notice where on that other asset, that other asset I, I drew out this uh, as being the buy zone. Okay, and that seems to be in play on this asset. Okay, up, 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 down, down, buy, and boom. This is important because if it is bullish again, if the pullback is done, which we don't know, but if then statement, right? If all the ends are going to go up because of the new risk on mood, which our gauges have shown, right? Remember, the monthly and the weekly are now risk on. Not by economic data, but just showing you market behavior. So if the, you know, if the narrative is continues to be a risk on for the next, let's say, week or two, uh, and that would be on the back of earnings. Now I think if earnings are okay, then everyone's like, okay, soft landing achieved, right? Inflation's down, no recession, boom. So in that case, if that's the narrative, yeah, we're going to uh, 190. Ish, maybe 191. Okay. But the market conditions have to stay the same. But we've gone through much of the big catalysts this week. Central banks like Canada, New Zealand, and stuff uh, adjusting interest rates and adjusting their policy. Okay, good, good, good. CPI in the United States, good. So now earnings season, but we got through most things. And earnings season last week's. But it just starts like I think today Pepsi is reported. Okay, so uh, game on. That's a whole new thing. I mean, what a great business, huh? Selling sugar water. Hey Pepsi, what's your number one expense? Water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we put some color in it and some sugar. Yeah, it's all good. Anyways. Uh, 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 so, look, that could be serious risk on, huh? We don't know, but it could be, right? Okay. Denise was talking about uh, potentially selling these on uh, four hours. Yes. Okay, good point. We can do this if you want. If the market turns risk off, see, now we have these gauges, so we know it's not risk off, but if it was risk off, very often the yen is going to get strong. What does risk off mean? You don't want to risk your money investing into the UK. You're like, there's just too much risk. 
the economy is not doing well. So the future doesn't look bright to you. So you say, you know what, give me my money back. And you don't just bring your money home. If you're leveraged, you've borrowed money. And the cheapest money in the world is the Japanese yen. So you took, let's say, your U.S. dollars, right? Leveraged it up by uh, buying 100 to 1 or 50 to 1 U.S. dollars in yen. And then you took your yen and converted that to British pound. So if you're getting under your British pound, okay, you get you take a British pound, pay back your loan in yen, and then convert that back into dollars, <laughs> right? So the way it looks is you're selling pound to buy yen back. You're buying it yen, and then then you bring your money home. So anyway, so risk off would look like this, okay? People are uh, selling the pound. There's a hesitation. And somewhere between here and here, in the future, there could be continuation of selling the pound and paying back the leveraged loans. Has nothing to do with Japan. Actually, I shouldn't say that. The reason this went up so much had a lot to do with Japan. It's the last place to get free money. You have to understand that. Would you want to leverage up with cheap money or expensive money? Cheap money all day. That's what weakens the end. So in in periods where uh, the market's changing their mind, they're like, it's too risky. Then this would fall. And that's the rationale behind that. Uh, so right now I'm still short, but yeah, I, I'm using this as an example. Uh, it's not an easy decision, in particular this one, because as Denise says, uh, that's that's a pretty reasonable outlook for the next week. Okay, but also it's very reasonable that we start to break that. So decision-making process time. And that's why you want to look at uh, today, this week, you know, next month or the rest of this month. That's why we're analyzing multiple time frames. Okay, and the gauges are just showing you what everyone else is doing while you're making your decision. Cool. So should be a very interesting week. Remember, earnings season, PPI, weekly jobless claims. Okay, these are important. We want to see if jobs are stabilizing or if uh, people are starting to lose their job in the United States. Okay, we haven't seen that quite yet, but uh, that would be interesting if it started to happen. Okay, I think the big thing is really this kind of softer economics going on where we'll start to get a trickle of earnings this week from u.s companies reporting and then more next week and then even more more the week after and it becomes like hundreds of companies reporting and so it can get uh, very interesting and we want to look at it on aggregate in general you know are these companies uh, doing well and really what i care about is not how well they did last quarter but what do they think the next uh, six to 12 months is going to be like? And if they have some doubts, okay, then we're, we're going to lean back on, um, on risk off. Also, there are some companies like when NVIDIA reports or Apple or, you know, so on and so forth, when they report, they themselves could move the market. One reason for it is <clears throat> the way that the NASDAQ is created is just put so much weight on on those five or six stocks <clears throat> that they end up being the market <laughs> you know like it's weird right let's say there's 300 stocks in the index but if five or six of them move the whole thing moves then you're like it's weird it's weird then why do you need the other you know uh 295 companies okay so anyways uh be careful out there and I'll see you when I see you. Thank you for being a subscriber. Hope you love all the new updates. And there are more coming. There are more coming. More updates are coming. Yeah. So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Have a great one.